Parco hits the lineup to take on rookie Kyle Ibelli and former pipe master Jeremy Flores. An amazing three-pack already getting started with Joel Parkinson, who doesn't like not being on the first wave of the heat at Jeffries Bay. Starting to run down the line, and Parco showcasing that style in between turns. Gets the carve back into the pocket, now going off the top. Slowing down to pull into the barrel. Nice positioning. Completes that one, and now looking for more. Lay back, ends up sitting down on his board, but Parco picks himself back up for the completion. I mean, you can see he's way up by Boneyard, and he knew this wave was going to have a nice line to it. It was going to give him some of that pace. He didn't have to chase it too much, but just enough, you know, and uh, surfed it well. You know, he is nursing a bit of a, a knee injury, grade one tear. So I'm sure there's a little bit of effect. I'm sure he's got some taping and stuff on there, but he has been putting in time in the water. He's been uh, practicing a bunch, gets a nice barrel. That was cool. And then this move here, he lays into it and gets a little loose off of it. Somehow was able to stand back up and complete the ride. So it's a solid start for Joel Parkinson. His style's timeless. What about his rail work? What'd you like about this one? Well, again, any time that you can lay into a turn uh, all the way through the entire arc, almost 360 degrees. You know, he's putting his board back into the foam. That's difficult to do at J-Bay. Uh, but again, he's got a ton of experience out here and knows those types of waves that he wants to ride. And this was going to give him that opportunity. Uh, and he did it with a ton of speed. I think that that's always crucial in getting excellent scores is that you want to have a ton of speed through your maneuvers. So I remember there was one he was injured in 2010 where he couldn't compete here. And it just doesn't feel right when you don't have Parco at a wave like this. Setting up this big turn is Jeremy Flores. Another snap to get down the line. A little layback to change up the flow. Now pulling into the barrel. That one's stretching out a little bit quickly down the bricks, and he goes down. Flores on his first score of the heat will be compared to the start of Parkinson. Parko gets a 6-1-7. In, in contrast... Kyle did get down here for that swell and was able to get some practice surfs. Here comes Parco. Draws that first turn off the top. He knows he has to get down the line. Big section. He's going to have to go around this one. Nice, easy flow. Big vertical climb off the bottom. Hits it hard off the top. Challenging wave to ride. Always looking smooth, even on his finishes. And that'll back up the 617. Well, Kelly, do you mind taking us back in history? Your first. I'll take, I'll take you present in history to Kayo getting a perfect wave right now. Oh, Look thank at you. this thing. This is. Am I getting to talk to this? I want you to. That'd be great. Yeah, this is a perfect wave. And nice and smooth on the face. It's got a great tempo to it. A few big different turns already. He's going to get barreled now. Little pocket ride and big, huge floater to start. Finish. Nope. Goes down. Equipment is so important. We see Kaiwa Belly open up with a 7.33 on his first ride as he sat and waited with priority. I know, Kelly, I think you've got a great vision of that Jumbotron and seeing the replays there. We'll go down through the best points of Kaiwa's opening ride of competition. As we lead up to that, uh, we'll now see that first turn once again. Kelly, what do you like about this whip? Well, look, he sets it up with a nice kind of carve down. Here's a more wrapped out power turn and a third one kind of holds the rail nicely there gets to hit the lip a little bit gets a little bit of a tube here didn't really finish the wave off very nicely kind of got stuck there in a weird place um, yeah but I watched Kayo out here yesterday it was a lot smaller but he was shredding see another shot of Kayo from the drone footage there even without the finish still got a 7-3-3 to open up with a massive score you can see that yeah. float decision getting a little hung up off the top. When he was 18, he won this contest as a wild card, and uh, deservedly so. Here goes Kayo again on a smaller one. Kayo. This is going to run down line ahead of him, I think. So he's up and out. Kayo's still counting the 7-3-3 as his best number, chasing a 3-2-7. Out the back, let me change the subject. Here we go. We've Look got at this thing. a runner. This is Jeremy Flores. 
Wow. Jeremy's great out here. He's, I think he sort of underestimated it this wave, but he surfed great. This, he, he has a flow. He gets that quick snap. Uh, I was just about to say he oftentimes throws a, the layback snap too. That wasn't his best one, but you know, he gets that thing in there and it's really functional at this wave with all the chop and the bump. And today I think it's a little bit deceiving from the beach and on probably online as well. Looking like Jeremy Flores, 6-1-7, taking the lead off Parco. Joel down to second, still holding priority, just needs a 4-5. And this is Kai Wibelia. Draws a little layback off the lip. Trying to regain connection to the open face here. Gets back in for a top turn wrap. Kayo now pulls in. He'll pop out the other end. Now trims it with a full roundhouse cutback. And Bally will step off. Improving on a 2.6 and only needed a 3.34 to take the lead. But that's exactly it. He reads a lineup really well. He's able to adapt. He knows his equipment. Uh, you know, spot on. I mean, you can talk to Xanadu, who, you know, I've been working with him this past year as we watched the replay here of this beautiful wave, um, is that he's hyper-intelligent. Um, you know, he, he knows how to, uh, you know, direct his equipment with Xanadu and, and talk about it. He'll remember stuff. He's very, almost like, kind of like Kelly in a way, where he remembers moments uh, and, and can draw off those really easily, draw off history. Uh, you know, I guess when the, you know Xanadu was talking, this is a 617 here from uh, Jeremy Flores. Uh, this was good surfing too. You know, he gets to the end here, he goes to those layback snaps. I love how compressed Jeremy gets out of his moves. You know, that one there, you know, kind of sloppy, but comes back and gets one more here to finish. So he's in contention in this heat as well. But being able to draw. Really impressive. Kyle just took the lead off Flores with that last wave of a 533. Jeremy up now, needs a 6-5 here, hits it under the lip, now pulling into the barrel, still traveling, Flores gets the exit. Looks like he might try to set up the barrel again. Stalling a few times, gets a little high and tight barrel, bonus section. He stayed in that for a long period of time, you see again, jams down the line, ton of speed, gets that, you know, kind of down carve snap, but then in the barrel for it's a good three seconds, and then finishes with a nice round section here in that impossible section. That's where that sand has been building up. And there, deep behind it, disappears from view, comes out at the bottom. Uh, so I think this is going to be enough. It's going to take give him that give him that lead. Love that use of the layback to use it as a maneuver to position himself in for the barrel. Multiple sections to work with here. Was it enough for a 6.5? I would say so. And how good is it to be back at a place that you're so familiar with? I mean, as soon as you stand up on your surfboard, the crowd is behind you. It's got to feel really w good to just be competing in this atmosphere. Absolutely. It feels, uh, it feels incredible to be home, you know. Um, and of course, with the crowd behind you, it gives you that added confidence. Um, every time you do a big turn, you can hear the commentators and you know, those big floaters at the end, everyone kind of erupts. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a warm feeling and you know, I, love just, I love being home. And, you know, the, the freezing cold mornings and the, the windy weather and, you know, those warm showers after your early morning surfs. Everything like that just makes it feel at home for me. And, um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a time for me to just be able to let my hair down and relax and, and just surf. And what was your first experience at this contest? I mean, coming here as a, as a young Grom. Um, Contest-wise, I think I came here probably when I was around 12 or 13 years old. Um, yeah, and just pretty much watched all of the best surfers in the world go absolutely mad. And um, at that point in my life, there was like no ways I was paddling out of super tubes because it was way too big for me. As we'll get caught up with the replays, during that chat with Jordy, Parco got an absolute gem, Pete. He sure did. And uh, that typical Parco where he's just, he seems like he's just on top of the water. Uh, just butter as he first gets those two carves outside and sets up the inside. Beautiful pace again. We talk about pace at J-Bay. It's critical here. You know, you don't want to miss sections, and sometimes you feel like you need to chase it down. But Parco is so relaxed. It's, looking, it's making it look so easy and completes that ride. And looking for a 6.74, I would feel like he's going to get it. And then this wave was a bit from behind. Kayo, this wave was going to run down the line the whole time. And uh, 
you know, he tucked underneath that one, but pretty much knew at that point that it was uh, that last section that was going to close out on him. And I don't know if it's going to even fit into his top two. Well, it's been a fun heat to watch. We've had multiple lead changes. Joe Parkinson now in first with a 7.43 on his last. Open with a 6.17. That was the first wave of the heat. 7.43. Now back to live action with Kyle Belly up. He needs a 6.28 here to take the lead. Now with 90 seconds to go. Oh, man. If he doesn't get it on this wave, it's his own fault. This is one of the better waves I've seen all day. But it's going to close out on him, so I'm not quite sure. It's going to be close. He's trying to sell it. <laughs> He's selling it. That's uh, the classic claim at the end of a wave to try and get that, like, yeah, I'm, I'm showing you with my body language. I think I got it. <laughs> Kelly, let's break this one down. Was this enough, a 6.28 on this wave? Well, let's see, a little flat to start. He's kind of just setting it up. Here it stands up on him. He's waiting for it, which he really had to do. There's a nice full wrap carve into the double up section here. There's another nice carve and a good click to finish. Perfect timing on the end. I mean, I think he's going to get it. And uh, he probably didn't have to sell it to get it. But, uh, you know, I was saying earlier in the heat, I thought Parco made a mistake by letting Kayo have a good wave. And then Parco ended up getting a better wave. So I thought maybe that was brilliant. <laughs> But now it looks like, you know, Parker would have got those two waves that Kayo had. Maybe, he, you know, we'll see what this last score is and we'll see what happens because of it. So during that last replay at Kayo, Jeremy just got this wave. As we check out the replay, big layback, tail drifting hack on the open face. Got another projection snap in. Flores was looking for a 6.88 though, but we're still waiting on scores from Kayo. Another layback attempt from Flores, but loses the finishing move. This heat has run out of time. Really focusing on Kyle's last performance. Can he upset Joel Parkinson? In Kelly's top three list of best J-Bay surfers of all time out here. And scores are coming in. Looks like he's going to get the score and some. A 7-9-3. Kyle yeah. steals this one off Parco and Flores. Well, oh, Parco's up after the heat, but not going to matter at this point, is it? That was great. You know, Kyle's that guy you can't underestimate. I... I knew after seeing him surf yesterday, he was going to be a tough draw out here for anybody. Really epic heat to watch. And Kelly, hey, thanks so much for your time and hanging out with us. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, you guys. And I'll say uh, uh, Curran was my first, Aki's my second, and I think Parko is number three on that list. I like that. Top three. Epic <laughs> to hear from. It's All right. Kelly Slater, good luck in round three. Had a big heat win earlier today. And we'll hear Kyle Belly in just a moment after coming from behind to steal that one off Joel Parkinson and Jeremy Flores.